Hey boys, it's Harm None. Today we're going to be going over the 10 types of players in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now there are a lot of different types of players in Grand Theft Auto Online, obviously, but in this video I've taken 10 that I think are either the most common or the most annoying or just the most typical to see in Grand Theft Auto Online. Anyway guys, if you enjoy the video, a like is of course appreciated, if not dislike, Let's go for 5,000 likes on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. I'm going for 300,000 this year and I need your help to do it. And let's go ahead and get started with number 10. At number 10, we have the Stunter. Usually found on a motorcycle, but have also been known to use scramjets a pretty good amount as well. These guys are very daring and from the safety of their gaming chair or couch, they will pull off Evil Knievel level stunts just from the comfort of their own home. Enough making fun of them, some of the things stunters have pulled off in GTA are genuinely impressive, especially what they're able to do with motorcycles, the bunny hops, the things they can do with these things are absolutely crazy, and I'm sure you guys have seen the crazy like scramjet drifts and stuff like that, as well as the trick shots where they fly super high up in the air and they'll like snipe a guy who's like driving a car down the road with a missile. It is genuinely impressive. The guys that are able to get so good with these vehicles like the scramjet or motorcycles, whatever motorcycle they choose, it is really cool. It is really impressive. And I definitely could not do it myself. So more power to these guys. We need to keep the stunters going in GTA Online, that's for sure. At number nine, you don't see many of these guys anymore, but we have the new player or the noob. Usually these guys will be found just outside of their Ulta street apartment. That's the one with that sort of garage that goes down into the underground garage. That's like the ultimate low level apartment in Grand Theft Auto Online. And they probably have a Grotti Turismo R as well as some other like cool vehicles, but some below average vehicles at that. Uh, and they also will beg modders to drop the money inside chat over, over text. They also enter every possible YouTube giveaway that they can possibly find. And they usually try to shoot a high level for no apparent reason and then scream cry when the high level goes after them. They also always, always run away. They, it doesn't matter if you're coming up to them and you're friendly, it doesn't matter if you're coming up to them and attacking them, it doesn't matter if you're just passing by, they will always run away. And there's usually some really dramatic car chases that can happen where they're gonna crash whatever stock vehicle they're driving into like a bus stop and then hit a fire hydrant and get knocked over. And then they, they kind of crash when they're running away from you like hamsters die in real life. It's just traumatic, whatever happens to them. And I think that kind of sums up the noob of Grand Theft Auto Online pretty darn well. Number eight, we have the ace or the pilot. These are the aerial gods of Grand Theft Auto Online and you will be more than likely finding them flying a Starling or a Pyro and going on about how every other aircraft in GTA Online is inferior to those two, even when nobody suggested otherwise or asked for their opinion in the first place. They can either be really kind and cool or the most annoying person you've ever seen in online. There is no in between with these people, I swear to God. But usually the ones that are really, really annoying are the guys that are in the Starling or the Pyro. Usually B11 guys are pretty normal and F160 Raju guys are like kind of normies. They're just regular sort of aerial people. They don't really care. But yeah, the pilot aces are definitely the Starling and Pyro like stands. And uh, Pyro guys aren't that bad. Starling guys are the absolute worst though. And number seven, we have the Glitcher. Usually these people don't have arms or at least their characters don't appear to because they've done some sort of glitch to make their arms invisible, which is strange. They have extremely wacky glitched outfits that don't make any sort of like sense when it comes to, you know, what a real life outfit would look like. And they probably have F1 wheels on every vehicle and have pretty awful customization to go with it usually. Don't get me wrong, not all F1 wheel cars look terrible, but a lot of these people seem to. They generally are also extremely annoying and may or may not have a side hustle where they try to shill modded accounts. And if they do YouTube, they'll occasionally call you out and say that you're view botting because you don't make one shitty video a week on some glitch that gets patched the next day or that's impossible to do. And you don't try to shill modded accounts to your fans. Now, of course, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, but you know, for those of you that know, you know. Next up at number six, we have the weirdo. Kind of similar to the glitcher, about as cool, which is to say not very cool. They usually dress 
in very, very strange clothes. Kind of similar to the Glitcher, but usually these ones have arms and their outfits aren't so much just like strange, they're just really kind of ugly looking. And oftentimes they'll also have ugly vehicles to go with. And a lot of the time these guys will also be the quote unquote sophisticated gentleman or some shit. A lot of the time they'll wear like a top hat and like an oddly colored suit and drive around in a Roosevelt. And I'm sure you've probably had the displeasure of coming across one of these people before, or maybe you are one. But the weirdos of GTA Online are definitely these type of people. They drive like the sort of off-brand cars, they wear the off-brand clothes, they wear the like, it's just, they just are trying so hard to not fit in with everybody else that they just end up being kind of weird. I guess it's kind of like real life, but yeah, that's how it goes, I guess. And number five, we have the role player. Now the role player has existed for a very, very long time in Grand Theft Auto Online, and even before GTA Online came out, they existed just in a different game probably. Now with the police cars that have been added into GTA Online, I feel like the role player is now thriving in online public sessions, and I feel like you're almost guaranteed to run into one who's trying to pull you over in damn near every session. Also beyond actual GTA Online, there is also 5M where a lot of role players reside doing actual role play. And it is pretty cool to see how much people are actually able to do with you know the base game of GTA 5. And as far as the players go, I think role players are pretty good people in terms of the overall scale of like, you know, one to 10, I feel like role players are, they're, they're pretty good guys generally, most of the time I feel like. And number four, we have the toxic players. The toxic players at GTA Online are usually one of two things. One, they're a player that goes around looking to cause trouble and misery for anyone they run into, or they're that exact same thing, but also a tryhard and they will smoke the entire lobby and tell you about how awesome they are at this 11 year old video game. The second type is my personal favorite. These guys are the biggest losers of all time and will sacrifice up to 29 other people's fun for their own enjoyment and brag about how awesome they are and that nobody can stop them from doing what they do. Even if people do actually shut them down and destroy them, they have a delusional complex to them where no matter what the scoreboard says, they think that they are always winning. And my favorite ones of them are the ones that will 1-0 you and then say something like, 1-0, I'm up on you forever, and then leave the session. If you beat them, however, they will not sleep for weeks, so do keep that in mind. Make sure you beat these guys when you run into them. Number three, we have the modder. These guys are mostly found on the PC platform these days, but they were around on console in the very early days of Grand Theft Auto Online on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Now I'd say about 80% of them are just nice people who want to help out and give out some money to other players. The other 20% are just power tripping losers. Out of that 80% though that are nice, about 10-20% to of those people probably didn't get enough attention as a kid and want attention, largely from other anonymous men in GTA Online kind of sus but whatever floats your boat I guess usually they'll tell everybody like oh go here oh do this oh drive here and you know do that oh come aboard my yacht knowing that you'll do it because you're desperate for the money they're dropping but it gives them a false sense of wow I'm so important everyone's listening to me for the first time in their lives modders are cool some of them at least I'd say 60% are cool the other 40% they yeah anyways next up at number two we have the grinder these guys try to make money as efficiently as possible in Grand Theft Auto Online. They treat GTA Online as their job and they will find the absolute most efficient way to maximize their money per hour and try various methods until they find one that is the best. Now it doesn't matter how mentally taxing their method is, like playing the KO Perico heist 59 times in 4 hours, as long as that money keeps flowing, they will keep grinding it out. And I can respect it for sure, I just think that running businesses will let you have fun and also make money at the same time, but then again, I'm not a grinder and yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to do what's just the most efficient thing possible. I'm going to have a combination of like fun in a video game, imagine that, not treating it like it's my full time job, which I guess it kind of is, but that's besides the point. Grinders are pretty cool. I do respect the things that they will uncover in GTA and how to maximize efficiency and job warping and like all types of crazy shit. But yeah, they, uh, they're they good guys. They're good guys generally. I, I just also think at a certain point, you definitely need to take a break and just go outside for a little bit, maybe one hour a day, call it that and that should be okay. And of course, at number one, we have the car guy. The car guys of Grand Theft Auto Online are either cool or cringe as fuck. A lot of them are relaxed individuals who just simply like cars and want to buy, customize, and drive them in GTA Online. 
But then there's the other side of it where you get nerds. And when I say nerds, I mean the guys that correct you like their life depends on it just to be wrong anyways. I think the car community in real life or in Grand Theft Auto Online can be super annoying and cringe in this way. A bunch of overconfident idiots that think they know what they're talking about, trying to tell other people how things are about certain vehicles. And a lot of the cringe ones will also get really, really jealous if you have more cars or nicer cars than they do. And overall, I think there's more car guys than anyone else in GTA Online, which unfortunately means you're going to get more asshole ones of them than you're going to get of anything else in this game. So it kind of sucks, but for the most part, a lot of the car guys are pretty nice. And I think it is definitely the most plentiful amount of players in GTA Online for sure. Anyway, guys, there you have it. Those are my picks for the 10 types of players in Grand Theft Auto Online. Let me know what you thought of my list in the comment section down below. Are there any types of players that I missed? Should I make a part two to this video? If you think so, let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, dislike if you didn't of course, subscribe if you're new and you want to help me get to 300k, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Peace.